quite interesting, really, because last week, Fergie, in the way that he does, circle the wagons and said, no, it doesn't impact on me. The money's available if I want to sign a player. But you have to worry, don't you? Ollie, you've been worrying about football. Are you worried about the money? Yeah, really worried. I mean, 500 million debt isn't a big deal. Uh, David Gill was asked about this in a fans uh, forum meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago. He said, what about this 500 million debt? David Gill says, don't worry. It is serviced five times over every week by our worldwide revenues, which I'm sure it is. The thing that worries me is that when we're looking at struggling to keep our form, you know, we've serviced this debt on the fantastic form of the 90s and the noughties of the Alex Ferguson era. Is that era coming to an end? Is our form slowly dropping off? Are we going to be able to service that debt? So it's not the debt in itself that I'm worried it's about. It's not really serviced either, because if you take away the sale of Ronaldo, which they're not going to have it every year... It was £40 million light. Yeah, exactly. And how many £80 million pound players are you going to find in a season, Simon? But, and just We'll talk about it in principle, then, then the specifics, because this selling your best player to balance the books is something you associate with a team doing well in Football League 2. Not a team top of the football pyramid, isn't it? Well, the thing is that United had the perfect excuse to sell Ronaldo last yeah, summer. They did. He wanted to leave, he wanted to play for Real Madrid. Will, it, will there come a point when they're actually having to sell players? That's the scary to, bit. And that's the, pro and that's the problem they've got. And they've only got one player who I would say that ev you know, every club in the top club in the world will be interested in, and that's Wayne Rooney. Uh, you know, I know Vidic is obviously interested in Barcelona, but they're not going to raise more than maybe 20 million for a player who's, I think, 29. Rooney's the, you know, Rooney's the next one. And if clubs look at United now and start thinking, you know, this is a selling club, then they could be in, they could be in trouble. I, I think we've seen the demise of other clubs through money, i.e. big money gets involved and they think they know about football as well as they know about spreadsheets and they start getting involved in, in the transfer window and stuff like that and, and selling players when it should be left to the manager. I've always been really happy with the Glazers that they've let Fergie get on with what he does best. But I think now this is going to be the silent killer and perhaps, perhaps something, you know, the other side of the coin is that Maybe it's not meddling in football. Maybe it is just this huge colossal debt is going to bring us we, down. We can say the Glazers. Are, I mean, the Glazers have, have, have done well in a way that they've they've let the people who know about football look after football matters. But then you look at the record with Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which is the club, the NFL club that they own. Tampa Bay five six years ago were Super Bowl champions. This year, I think they won three games all season. The crowds are down by twenty thousand, and they are the lowest payers in the NFL. They've just not invested in that team. Will the same happen at Old Trafford? Well, Ian, let me ask you this, because mm. Fergie did what he does. He always keeps it in-house. He never lets anything get out that he doesn't want to get out. So it didn't surprise me that he said what he said. But realistically, if you have got a huge amount of debt and we've read about these payments in kind that the Glazers are involved with... Yeah. Are you going to sanction what looks to be the going rate of 30, 40, 50, 60 million pounds for a player if you haven't got the situation in hand financially. I just can't see it happening. Well, no, you can't. I mean, it's something that the Glazers have done year on year. They've said they're going to provide this certain amount of money. I think when they first came in, they said it was something like £25 million pounds that they're willing to spend on a player every season. Uh, I don't see that they can do that now. Ferguson's saying that there's not value in the market. There might be you know, a certain amount of accuracy in that because a lot of players are, especially when United come calling as well. You look at the transfers of people like Dimitar Berbatov. I don't think any other team would have, have to have paid up to £30 million pounds for him. Perhaps City are in the same situation now. But can, can anyone really, really, realistically see United spending, say, £30, £40 million on the likes of David Villa, David Silva, uh, Karim Benzema, people like that? I don't think so. We're even talking about the sale of Wayne Rooney, which for someone like you, Ollie, must be awful. Yeah, without Rooney, I just think the team would go to bits. I mean, he's the one player I could say consistently throughout the season has been a source of strength of unity and has been the driving force in the team. I think one of the big problems with Manchester United is that we're not a driving force because we've got so many problems, obviously, uh, mainly around the, the, the defence. We've got a lot of players out of position and, and people shifting about. It seems like perhaps individually there might be good players, but they're all running in different directions because they don't know what they're doing. There's no driving force and Wayne Rooney is the only guy... Uh, he is the galvanising force in the team. But Simon, he, uh, here's an interesting poser for you. Alex Ferguson is not going to go on forever, but he might go on for a bit. But if he found that he was being undermined because of a financial situation at a club, not because of his football acumen, do you think there's a possibility he might say, no, 
This is not the Manchester United I've built. And walk. Well, I think, like, as I said before, the, the situation with Ronaldo was that Ronaldo wanted to leave. He did, yeah. So, you know, that had to happen because Ronaldo wanted to leave the club. Whether the same thing will happen if players are sold from, from under him, I don't think Sir Alex, Ferguson, Sir Alex Ferguson will stay around for too long if that kind of thing happens. Because that would be my gut instinct, Ollie, that if he found that the sands had shifted and that players were sold of a financial necessity rather than because he decided to move them on. I don't see Alex Ferguson taking that on board at I, all. I don't, I don't, he would not take that on board, but <clears> I don't <throat> think he'd lead the club. I think it's much more likely to get involved in something which we've never seen in football before, something like a fans' revolt, a fans' revolution or something like that. Alex Ferguson is through and through Manchester United. He lives Manchester United. He couldn't leave the club. Emotionally, he wouldn't be able to leave the club. He might be disgusted at what would happen, and I'm thinking very abstract here in, in years and years to come, but I don't think he'd ever leave the club. Well, Ian, yeah. I understand what Ollie's saying, but there's a bit of me that says if the club changes so radically, mm. it is not the Manchester United that he put together, then yeah. maybe he wouldn't feel the same as walking away. Well, the act of walking away wouldn't but have been I'm, so, what I'm been sorry, 10 sorry years to interrupt, ago. but you've got to realise that he's invested in so many people in Manchester. He's invested in me. I'm 25 years old. I've grown up knowing only Alex Ferguson. He would not be able to walk away from the club because there's thousands and thousands of Alex Ferguson's walking around the city. He's a part, he's an organic part of Manchester and he wouldn't be able to just walk away for financial reasons. He might be able to walk away from Old Trafford and, and, and the players, but I think they would all have a meeting outside of Old Trafford and say, see you later, Glazers, we're going to do something about this because his heart's in it. I've got a couple of questions there, Jimmy, from people at home. One for you. Ollie, do you think Manchester United is now very much a team in decline that's come from Dave Roberts in Stockport? Is Dave Roberts in Stockport trying to upset me and, and get to the root of all my nightmares <laughs> well, recently? I, when you get I don't know, and I hope not. Please, Lord, if you're listening, I hope not. Um, at the moment. No, I'm not going to answer that. I can't. No, but the pendulum eventually does swing, Sam. Back oh. in the 1780s, you could never see an end to the Liverpool dominance. But the world does change. In our lifetime, do you remember when Franny Lee said we're going to bring more money to City than's ever been spent? That was, we were talking about tens of millions. Football ownership is going to be a multi-billionaire business soon. I think the problem that, that Alex Ferguson has got, that he hasn't had since 95 when he cleared a, quite a few players out and brought the, the youth team winning squad through Beckham, the Nevilles, etc., is that he just doesn't... He, he, from, since then, he's only needed one big sign in a year just to keep things ticking over. At this point, United, or in the summer, United will have to invest heavily in that team Otherwise, they're going to struggle. Liverpool failed to do it this summer and they're paying the price for it. And I just wonder if United don't invest, don't spend some money on bringing not just one player, but maybe three or four players, yeah. top players into yeah. the club, then it could be a struggle for them. I'll tell you what, Ian, just to finish it, it's going to be a very interesting period in Manchester football the next three or four years. Well, it's going to be a very interesting period just at the end of the season, just seeing how, how the pendulum could shift and things like that. You're looking at a title race that's been the closest in years. You're looking at people like Aston Villa, Tottenham City, hot on the heels now of the so-called top four. So just even the end of the season's got to be interesting. Over the next four years, who knows what's going to happen? Who knows what's going to happen indeed. I'll tell you what is, though, it's going to be very, very interesting. We're going to be here every week talking football. If you want to get involved, why not fire off an email? Today at channelm.co.uk. Many, many thanks to Simon and to a slightly nervy-looking Oliver still, and to Ian. And we'll see you the same time next time. This is the Football Debate Show, and you only get it here at Channel M. See you next week. See you later.